Welcome to Preps Plus Extra, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel's online high school sports show. Hi, I'm Mark Stewart, prep editor of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Joining me as always, J.R. Radcliffe, sports editor of Now Newspapers. How's it going this week? It's going great. Yeah. Well, this is our second playoff edition of Preps Plus Extra. Week one pretty much went according to script, except for uh, Waukesha West beating uh, Waterford, uh, a number seven seed being a number two seed. And, and otherwise, we just had a, a handful of minor upsets where you know a five seed beats a, beats a four seed. One of those five seeds beating a four seed was Greendale, which uh, got a measure of event, uh, revenge, maybe a large measure, measure of revenge, yeah. uh, against Tosa West. Let's hear what Peter Picar and Coach Rob Stoltz had to say about the win. This team, the confidence level right now, where is it at? It's uh, it's high. We were, you know, we had a couple shaky weeks, but uh, we're definitely we're on a roll now, and we're ready to take on. We got, I'm assuming Brook East if they won. So, when you look at that scoreboard, well, now it's awful. When you look at the final score of this game, does that help you guys think that we're really on the roll that we need to be at this time of year as well? Because it worked both offensively and defensively. Uh, yeah, we're on the right road, but it's a completely different team next next week, and we got a lot to prepare for. So. We got our hands full this week. That's the interesting thing about this team. You talk about the start of the season, and everyone pointed out how young we were. We have really eight seniors in uniform. Um, but then we start out 3-0, and and people aren't talking about how young we are. They're talking about how talented we are. Then we step on step on ourselves against Pewaukee despite a halftime league. Well, we didn't win that because it's because it, we're young. No, Pewaukee is a very talented team. Um, and then we come out and we stubbed our toe a little bit the next few weeks. And then last week I thought was a big rebound for us. And a lot of that I thought continue today. Our, our kids are are pretty resilient. They're young, but they're pretty resilient and really talented. As Peter noted, uh, Greendale faces Brookfield East in the second round. Uh, that's going to be a, one of the better, more intriguing second round matchups you've seen both those teams play this year what what jumps out to you about that yeah I game? mean and, and Greendale has been really two different types of teams this year and, and coach Rob Stoltz talked about how they kind of stubbed their toe for a couple weeks I mean yeah. they sort of disappeared as the Greendale that we know them and they've they've completely resurrected you know the way that they dominated Tosa West after losing to that team in the regular season really surprises me I think Brookfield East should be concerned about it but you know we're still talking about a team that's undefeated and probably the best conference in the area maybe in the state in the greater metro so Brookfield East is still going to be favored in that game but it certainly is it certainly is a pretty interesting battle in level two yeah yeah you know one thing I didn't realize is that you know these two scrimmaged each other early in the oh, year okay. I, I, I didn't believe know that either. and uh, and then also, um, I believe, they, they, didn't they, did they play in the playoffs last year? I think they did. They, yeah, they might have. Yeah. Uh, East would have won, I believe. Yes. So, you know, in, in those cases, the, I mean, even though Brookfield East is undefeated and you would have to call you know, Greendale an, an underdog, the fact that they faced each other, you know, it kind of takes that element of mystery. And maybe the yeah, guys from Greendale aren't going to be as nervous, you know, facing us. Because sure. as Rob uh, Stoltz noted, they are a young team. Um, so, yeah, it's gonna, it, it'll be interesting. But obviously, you know, it's... You know, East is the team to beat until someone right. prove, proves otherwise. Yeah. Um, you know, we were just talking about five seeds beating four seeds. Well, one four seed that held serve last week was defending state champion Kenosha Bradford, which overcame a slow start to beat Milwaukee Riverside. Let's hear what Coach Jim Camerata had to say about the win. Yeah, that, well, I mean, we came in knowing their skill kids were pretty good. I mean, we had a couple of goofy things happen before the game started, and so our kids were a little unfocused. But, I mean, we knew their skill kids were excellent, and so it, it, it kind of caught us, but I think we, we kind of regrouped. And a quick word on Henry Cabrera. He's kind of a beast to bring down, isn't he? When he's healthy, he's, he's one of the toughest, hardest-running fullbacks in this state, I believe. And coach, uh, going ahead here, like I said, you're defending champs, not the same team as last year, but do you see some things here that, uh, tonight that you know this team can go away this year? Well, we played with a real good energy level tonight. I mean, I hope we can keep that up. Obviously, Oak Creek handled us the first time in conference play, so I mean that's going to be a tough one for us. But I think our kids are kind of looking forward to playing them and seeing if we can we can show ourselves up a little better than we did last time. Well, Kenosha Bradford finished third in the Southeast Conference. But as a defending champion, the question is always, can they do it again? What, what are your thoughts? Will, will Bradford, first of all, will they make it past this weekend? And what are your thoughts on the long term? They, they have a tough battle with Oak Creek. And, and obviously, the Knights are undefeated. They won the Southeast this year, including a win over Kenosha Bradford earlier this year. So they're, uh, they're, one of the, they're one of the teams that I think has a chance to legitimately get to Madison. So that's a very tough test for Bradford. But that being said, you know, they lost that game. They've played four games since losing to Oak Creek. Bradford has. They've won them all. They gave up as many points defensively in these four games as they did against Oak Creek. Beginning of the year, that defense was just giving up four touchdowns a game, really, for the, 
but for the first stretch of the season, they've sort of buckled, you know, they, they've sort of put it together to the point where now they're, they're not, they're not giving up that many points. Right, right. But, but 32 points is, uh, it, that's a lot of points to make up, yeah, for sure. you know, over the course of five, six weeks since, since those teams played, uh, played last. So, you know, it might be, uh, this might be it for Kenosha Bradford with all due respect to the Red Devils. Um, <laughs> You know, but but nonetheless, this was. I mean, even if, even if it is, I still think this was a, a really good year. It's one of those what I call like a, a program year for, for sure. a team where you know maybe they aren't as talented as they were the last pre uh, couple years, but they still get in the postseason. And in this case, they've won a game, and you know they're going to get you know at least a couple games uh, in the playoffs. Um, you know, so regardless, I think this is, you know good year for for Bradford. So, um, but but that said, Bradford, like we like we noted plays at Oak Creek, which is a case where the higher seeded team or the top seeded team gets to play at home. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't always work out. <laughs> uh, you know, the WIA, we, we went through this whole process of simplifying the seeding process last year, but we didn't completely simplify the process of who plays where and, and who gets a home game. So I'm sure people in Watertown, for instance, are thinking, well, why do we have to go to Waukesha West? But, well, there's a uh, bunch of them all over the state. Right, yeah, a bunch of them lower seeds get the upset, and then they get to host because the WIA wants everybody to get a chance to host a game. Right. So, and that's I still think that's an okay process. I mean, they're, they're, the WIA's perspective is to sort of spread the wealth, and everybody yeah. should be treated you know, with the right to gain from their appearance in the playoffs. So they didn't host in week one. They get a chance to host in week two. I don't think that's going to change. Now, I can understand why people don't don't like that. I mean, the higher seed team hosts on all levels of sports. Right. So it would make sense that if you are good enough to earn the one seed, for example, you should get to play through. I happen to think football is one of those games where home field advantage doesn't matter as much as it does, say, in basketball, where you're in an enclosed, tight environment where you're inbounding the ball and you got fans and, you know, bugging <laughs> you right, right over your shoulder. You don't have that in football. And, and I think... History sort of bears that out, not maybe in the NFL or, or even in college, but in high school, the better team usually does win. And if they right. don't, it's because the, the team underneath them played, played extremely well and not necessarily because the home field advantage worked one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was curious about the whole, um, you know, higher seed getting the home game. And I emailed Wade Lebecki, uh, deputy director of the WIA, and, you know, he, he gave some of the, the reasons you noted uh, which I kind of expected about, mm. you know, sharing the wealth as far as, you know, everyone getting a chance to host and, uh, you know, the money from concessions, you know, which can be, you know, big and some, you know, depending Pretty on Pretty substantial where, in the playoffs. Right, right. So, um, but, uh, but he also noted that when this whole seating process was talked about last year, that their coaches advisory committee really wasn't, you know, they didn't really support the idea of, you know, the higher seat always playing at home, mm. which tells you, I mean, if it was a big deal, the they, coaches would, they be would have, the issue. you know, I mean, obviously, if, like you noted, if this was basketball, I don't think that would have, right. you know, that, that would have been the first thing that was uh, a must have, you know, the yeah. higher seat being able to, to host uh, that, um, you know, that, that home, you know, th those tournament right. games. I don't think in Milwaukee we really feel it the way they might feel it in other parts of the state where the travel is so much more significant. I mean, you're going to have teams traveling two, two and a half hours to get to a game, maybe more in some cases, and, and they might be the higher seed in some cases. So that, uh, that's probably an, an issue that, you know, just the travel and, and the extra thought process of trying to, you know, get on the road and, and be on the road for a long time. In Milwaukee, it's not going to be as significant. You could make an argument, you know, there, we're kind of in a transition phase. Some, some schools have turf, regular artificial turf. Some have right. regular grass when you're used to one thing playing on another. Sometimes that can, that can be an issue. But, you know, I'll, as an anecdote, I look at Waukesha West Arrowhead, probably one of the biggest rivalries in the area, and two very competitive programs over the past several years on a very elite level and mm -hmm. the road team has won five of the last seven for the last five in fact um, in that series so I look at that just anecdotally and say maybe home field advantage doesn't matter as much as we think it would yeah well that was an excellent stat of the day to wrap up <laughs> this edition of preps plus extra on for more preps plus action you can watch me and Lance Allen every Sunday night on today's TMJ4 take care <laughs>